This is Bruce Muffson, Sunridge of Nevada. I want to let you know merchandise is coming. It will be coming real soon. Please keep on watching. You'll hear about it very soon. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for watching. This is Sunridge of Nevada, Bruce Moffs and LCSW coming at you again with another video. We're doing these mini videos lately. We want to give you information about different topics, and here we go. The topic I have today, looking behind me, is understanding what is moral injury. Just want to clarify something. We have we have merchandise coming out, which we'll be talking about PTSD, and I saw this article about it. And I wanted to clarify a new type of PTSD type behavior is emerging and I want to explain what it is, how to understand it, and why once again it's so important to have quality people to talk to and get things off your chest. There's a new type of this trauma that has emerged from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what's happening is, is that the people that served overseas in both again Iraq and Afghanistan are coming home and bringing this with them. What are these issues? What they're saying, the people that are dealing with this, they had issues were from failing to aid an injured person, to killing a child by accident or in self-defense. It has a name, moral injury. Unlike a better known casualty of war, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, moral injury is not yet a recognized psychiatric diagnosis, although the harm it inflicts is as bad, if not worse. And by the way, I got this article from the New York Times. Now, moral injury has an added burden besides what PTS brings to the table. It has guilt, shame, regret, sorrow, and alienation that requires a very different approach to reach the core of someone who's suffering and their psyche. Here's the thing I gotta remember something also. Unlike the, the men, well, the men who were drafted in Vietnam, drafted in Vietnam, the members of today's armed forces choose to enlist. And those that were deployed to Iraq at first thought they were fighting to bring democracy to the country. Then they were told later it was to win hearts and minds. Sounds a little bit eerie to Vietnam. But to many of those in battle, the real effect was to terrorize people. As one veteran says in the film, and it was a film called Almost Sunrise, about two men who had been overseas and took a basically a walk from Milwaukee to L.A. to try and work on um, their understanding of this. They had actually been in combat. They said, that's not what we signed up for. As one person says, we were there to terrorize people. And the other one says, that's not what we signed up for. Thomas Keating, a member of contempt, con, con, Contemplative Outreach, says in the film, here's something interesting also, antidepressants, which are so common in mental health issues, don't reach the depth of what these men are feeling. So what's the first challenge? The first challenge is to get emotionally damaged vets to acknowledge their hidden agony and seek professional help instead of trying to suppress it, often by engaging in self-destructive behaviors. That's a classic theme in any kind of counseling where you tell people who have been molested, abused, or in this case been through the trauma of war, not to be self-destructive. Find the right person and get it off your chest in a healthy manner. Now, a lot of the vets, they said, this is, comes from Brett Litz, a mental health specialist with VA Boston. He said a lot of vets won't seek help because what's haunting them are not things they did heroically or that because these were not heroic acts or that they were betrayed, they were betrayed or they can't live with themselves. A lot of guilt, a lot of guilt, survivor's guilt. The second challenge is to win their trust, to reassure them that they will not be judged and are deserving of forgiveness. Everyone wants to get a feeling of, you know, like I got to the point in my life, you know, I, I, I'm seeking them, seeking to get forgiveness for what I've done. Also, here's a problem too. They said those that are suffering from moral injury are contributing to a horrific toll of suicide among returning vets. They say between 18 to 22 vets kill themselves every day in the United States. That's a higher total than the number actually lost in combat. Think about that. Every day, 18 to 22 vets a day kill themselves. Higher number than actual combat. The wounds last a lot longer than people think. Now, Shira Magian, she's a research psychologist at San Francisco VA, and she studies moral injury. She said, 
we have a big focus on self-forgiveness. We have them write a letter to the person they killed or to a younger version of themselves. It's metaphorical, obviously. We focus on making amends, and we want them to plan for their future and move forward, especially important given that many think that they have no future. They feel helpless and hopeless, and they don't feel good about themselves, so why look towards anything down the road? Now, she also studied how killing during combat affects someone, and she said that those who had killed were at much higher risk for suicide, even when controlling the factors for PTSD, depression, and alcohol and drug abuse. She said that even decades after the Vietnam War, there was still an impact on vets who had killed enemy combatants and an even stronger effect on those that had killed women and children. So you see how this does not just go away, and it's there for a very, very, very long time, realistically, almost like a lifetime. So in Boston, the person that's working at the VA there, they have a thing called adaptive disclosure, which is almost akin, this technique is like confession. You close your eyes, and what the person does is the trauma you have with an imaginary conversation with a person that loves them. And you imagine how that person would respond, like a spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, priest, father figure, parent. Okay, The therapist then guides the conversation along a path towards healing. Disclosing, sharing, confessing is fundamental to repair. And doing this, the vets are not what, what happened to them can be tolerated and not rejected. And they learn to work in a way with the world they're engaging by helping, you know, helping children or writing letters. The goal is to find forgiveness within themselves or from others. And the, what everyone agrees on, the process takes a long time. So I want you to understand even more so with this issue, you need to find competent people. You got to find good people. Whether you're in the military, where you're at work with stress, problems, even more so in a combat situation where as a first responder, find someone you can relate to, that you can talk to, and get the help that you need so you're not carrying around this psychic burden, not psychic, but this, this burden that's crushing you, almost like, yeah, psychic, you know, in a way that's affecting you from being able to move forward and enjoy your life. It's not just an actual injury, it's mental, but it's just as real as a, as a, as a chest wound or a shot to the head. Thank you for watching.